And now we're going to do some spine curls with a little heel lift. You might want to put the headrest down for this. Keeping the bed as close to the stopper as you can. Heel sit bone width apart. You're going to tuck and curl, lifting up to a bridge. And then lift one heel off, the other heel off, and then roll down through the spine. You breathe in to prepare. You're in neutral here. And then you breathe out. Imprint the lower back, lift the tailbone up, keep the rib cage down. Breathe out to lift into lower, out to lift into lower. Pause and then roll back down. So we're targeting the back of the legs here, strengthening the back of the legs. More importantly, it's about pelvic stability. So lifting one foot off without that hip dropping down. So press through the arms. Press through the shoulder blades to stabilize the upper body. And really press through the supporting leg to lift the other leg off. So here I'm pressing through my left heel. Press through your right heel to lift the left leg up. And then curl the tailbone up to the ceiling to imprint the lower back. Neutral pelvis. And then we're going into hula. So you're going to lift your head and your chest up. And then you're going to reach your arms out parallel to the floor. And then little pulses through the arms. If it gets too necky, you can place the hands behind your head. And then into oblique, so right hand on top of the left. And we're pivoting around the bra area. If it gets too necky, put one hand behind the head. The pelvis is in neutral. The deep abdominals are drawing in. Just allowing your upper body to move, but with strength through your core. And then we're going into toe tap, single, single, double. Okay, it's more like a calf tap, actually. So you're lowering one leg down, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and then both legs down, exhale, inhale. Look at your belly button the whole time. Try and keep the belly button as flat as you can, making sure that you keep the pelvis and lower back still as you pivot in the hip sockets. So the thigh bones are moving in the hip sockets, using the back of the legs. And then in two, hip rolls with leg extension. So single leg extension. So you hip roll and then extend the top leg out and then bend and return. So you breathe in to roll, breathe out to straighten the top leg, breathe in to bend, breathe out to return. Rolling, imprinting the left shoulder blade down, you want to keep the shoulders down. It's not about how low you go, it's about how low can you go, keeping the shoulder blades down and then extending the legs out. Ideally keep the knees together if you can to really strengthen your thigh and your obliques. But if your hamstrings are tight, you can separate the thigh and sort of reach the leg away from you a little. Okay, so extending out, adding on a lever to strengthen your core. Keeping the knees inside thighs together if you can. If not, not a problem. Just extend the leg out. And then if you're feeling confident, you can lower it down a little bit more. Once again, making sure both shoulder blades stay imprinted down into the floor. Feeling the lower abdominals, the deep abdominals and your thigh bones, thigh muscles working. So now we're going to do a spring change. You're going to roll onto your side and get up and we're going to put either one and a half springs on or just one spring. This is for lat pull down series with curl ups. Okay, so I just referenced the program there that you can print up. Lying on your back, hands in straps, put the headrest up. And when you're ready, you grab your straps. Make sure you're lying straight, pubic bone, navel and nose all in one line. The bed starts away from the stopper, hands directly up above the shoulder blade so your muscles are engaged to start and then lift one leg up followed by the other. Breathe out to lift the head and the chest up, breathing in to return. Imagine you're pivoting around a skewer going through the right rib to the left rib around the bra line area, around the base of your shoulder blades. So you're lifting your head in your arms, pivoting around that line at the base of the shoulder blades, drawing the ribs towards your hips and then lower the arms down, open out 
and then say, same thing from T arms. Think of leading with the little fingers as you draw the arms in. Breathing out to lift, breathing in to lower. Armpits are squeezing oranges underneath them. Lengthening through the palate, the crown of the head and then into triceps. Keeping the elbows still in space. The shoulder blades are anchoring back and down and it's the back of the arm straightening the forearms. Out through the mouth to engage the deep abdominals. And then you might want to add a little curl up with that as well. Really squeeze the armpits and arm bones in towards the sides of the ribs and lengthen through your arms. Return the bed back to the stopper, place one leg down followed by the other and just two deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, letting go. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. Now push the bed away, legs and arms up into hundreds with the knees bent and pulsing the arms. Four, five, in, two, three, four, five, breathe out, two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, thirty, two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, forty. Okay, now keep going. Okay, with each out breath, reach the fingertips towards the bar a little bit more, lifting the shoulder blades up, pressing the lower rib cage down. Keep breathing into the lungs and the chest, drawing your belt in a notch. So the movement is happening around your lungs and your ribs as opposed to your belly. Good work. One leg down followed by the other. Two deep breaths, just letting go. Long out breaths just to calm your nervous system down. Okay, bed away from the stopper, arms up above your shoulders. We're doing some oblique curl ups. Legs are up into tabletop, legs are apart and you reach the left hand between the legs and then the right hand between the legs. Pressing the hands into the straps using your abdominals, not your neck. Okay, your neck will be working here, but it's the abs pressing the hands into the straps. Keeping the hips and the legs nice and stable and still. Lifting one shoulder blade up higher than the other, and then the other shoulder blade up higher, initiating from the pelvic floor navel to spine. Pelvic floor navel to spine out through the mouth, in through the nose, and then return back to the stopper. Once again, have a little rest. Okay, bed away from the stopper. We're doing single leg stretch with your head down. One leg up followed by the other, clamping the armpits down. Keep your head down, reach the arms down, extend one leg at a time. The pelvis is in neutral. If you're feeling your lower back working, imprint your lower back and tuck your tailbone up. Now reach the leg out, pause for a micro moment, squeeze the hamstring, the muscle at the back of the leg, reach out and then return. So yes, your thigh muscle is straightening the knee, but you want to also use the back of the leg to extend out through the hip. From your sit bone, you're reaching the heel away. If I was to poke around your sit bone muscles, that area would be contracted and firm. And then have a little rest. And we're going to now reverse that. Okay, so it's exactly the same thing. Move the bed away from the stopper. Legs up now, but this time the legs start out. Okay, and then bend one knee, reach out. Bend one knee, reach out. Okay, now the height of the leg depends on how your back's coping with this. Okay, the higher the legs, the easier it is. The lower the legs, the harder, okay. So as you draw the knee and use your abs now, as you reach out, pinch the glutes together. Pinch the inside thighs together. Really squeeze the back of the leg so you feel like you're really lengthening out through the hip sockets. And then feet down. We're going into semicircle plus reverse. Feet in a V position. Toes on the bar, heels together. Knees, hip bone width apart. Tuck the tail under, lift the pelvis up, keeping the heels together. Reach out through your inside thighs. Press the carriage three quarters of the way out. Keep the carriage still as you roll through your spine to neutral. Return back to the stopper. Breathe out through the mouth to lift up. Breathe in to straighten the legs three quarters. Breathe out to roll back down. And then breathe in to return. 
The challenge here is to keep the heels together and the inside thighs activated, lengthen through the front of the hips and then stabilizing, keeping the carriage still as you roll down is another challenge here. Press the carriage out, we're reversing it now. Keep the heels together, tuck your tail under, lift up. Squeeze the back of the knees and then roll back down through the spine, pinching the back of the knees together. Press out, heel bones press together. Imprint, tuck the tailbone up, lift up. Draw the bed in, reach out through your knees and then roll through the bony protrusions of your spine. And again, lengthen through your torso. Tuck, reach up, draw the back of the legs in, squeezing the sit bones in towards your heels. And then roll onto your side to get up. We're going to change the springs here. So one or one and a half springs. And we're going to kneel up and do kneeling lunge with a psoas stretch. So foot on the foot plate, left foot against the shoulder rest, right shin is against the foot bar. And then just pausing here, feeling a stretch in the front of your left hip and then five little pulses. Pressing back with the left glute, pushing through the heels of the hands to get a lift up through your spine. Send your breath into the front of the hip, creating space and length in the front of the hip. And then straighten your right leg and then bend. Breathing out to straighten the right leg and then breathing in to bend. Pushing through the heels, the hands and your feet. Feel your abdominals supporting your back. Feel your shoulder blades supporting your neck by anchoring them down and then pausing on the last one there. Breathe in, lower ribs, mid ribs, upper ribs. Breathing out, creating space and length through your body. Breathing in, lower ribs, mid ribs, upper ribs. Breathing out, drawing the core in, lengthening through your spine and then return. Keep the shin against the foot bar, reach the left arm over the head like a ballerina doing a pirouette. And then notice where you feel this stretch. The psoas muscle goes from the hip all the way through to your lower back, stretching out through that muscle. And then we're going to swap sides. Bring the bed back into the carriage, put your right foot against the shoulder rest, left foot on the foot bar. The legs are sit bone width apart. And then shin against the bar, pressing the right leg back, feeling the hip flexor stretch at the front of the right hip. And then deepening that stretch by pushing the foot, the knee back an inch or two, keeping the left shin against the bar. And then straighten the left leg, hamstring stretch, and then return. We want to keep the lunge in that right leg. Pressing through the hands and the feet. Feeling support through your waist muscles, drawing your belt in. The legs are active here. The feet energetically are pushing apart. You're creating space in the hips, lengthening out through the hip sockets. And then return the bed back into the stopper. Reach your right arm over the head. And then breathe into the right rib cage like you're lifting your right rib away from the right hip. Check into your shoulders, try and keep the upper shoulder muscles soft and then return the bed back into the stopper. Now into scooter, one spring on. You want to grab the box and put it side on. Step up so that your foot is in line with the middle of the carriage. Left foot against the shoulder rest, knees are even, back and pelvis is even. Press the carriage back, return. Breathe out through the mouth, in through the nose. The weight is in the right heel, so you're very much so pushing through the heels of your hands to send your pelvis back, feeling the weight into both heels. You could almost lift your right toes off the box. The weight is into your heels so much. And then swapping sides. I like to use the box so that your pelvis can stay even here. 
foot in line with the middle of the carriage. Both knees are even to start. Your weight is shifted back. The sacroiliac joints at the back there are even. And then pressing through the heels, the heels of the feet, the heels of the hands. The heels of the feet are going to fire up the glutes and the hamstrings. The heels of your hands are going to fire up those armpit muscles, those mid-back muscles to stabilise your shoulder girdle. You're going to put that box to the side now. And you might want to reference the program. We're about to go into knee stretch on the reformer. So please excuse my dishevelled look. This is the week that we found out that the world was going to change because of coronavirus. So I was a bit dishevelled, both, both physically and mentally, but still got on the reformer and felt amazing after doing the workout. So knee stretch. You start in the C-curve, you press the knees back and then under. Try and keep the arm bones still in space on that diagonal plane pressing through from the armpits through to the hands and it's the back of the legs and then the abs. Back of the legs and then tuck. Scoop and hollow, tuck. And then we're going to do it with a flat back. So elongate out, pressing back and forward. I want you to feel your obliques really working hard here to stabilise and lengthen through your waist. So that space between your hips and the ribs, it's long and it's drawing in and stabilising here. Back of the legs and abs are doing the work. You can experiment with playing with the spring tensions here too. If you don't feel it that much, maybe put on a heavier spring. I like to do elephant, which we're about to go into now on a heavier spring, so one and a half or one and three quarters. So you can feel the back of your legs doing the work. C-curve through your lower back, really tucking your pubic bone towards your chest. The thigh muscles are engaged, your kneecaps are lifting up. And then flat back. So you lift your chest up higher than your arms there. And the slightly pulling back from the foot bar. Obliques, back of legs. Stabilising the spine using the back and abdominal muscles. Back of the legs, front of legs. And then I like to press my hands apart slightly as well. And then curve your spine up towards the ceiling and release. We're going to short box series now. So grab the box. We're going to put that up on the carriage in a short box position, which is side on. The box needs to be against the shoulder rests. Put the springs on and then tuck your toes underneath the straps. Flex your feet and push your feet apart so your legs and feet are hip bone width apart, arms crossed over in genie. Now roll onto the tailbone, C curve forward, thighs and then return with length. Roll onto the coccyx and then keep that C curve as you go forward and then elongate up out of that. Good, it's the lower abdominals imprinting the spine back. Ribs to hips as you go forward, up and over, and then elongate up. Tuck, roll, push through your feet, press your feet apart, and then C curve, and then unravel. Flat back, hands against your forehead. Inhale, hinge back, exhale, return. So you start on your sit bones, and then you hinge back to your coccyx and then you return back to your sit bones. If you're feeling in your back, put your hands on your core. We don't want the belly to bulge here. Push the heels down to help you connect with the back of the legs. The hamstrings, the glutes are anchoring the back of the body down. 
and then short box series tilt up and over and then return deep abdominals lifting you up and over similar sensation to mermaid where you flare the right rib cage up and then hold that length and return flare the left rib cage up and then maintain that length deep abdominals scooping in and up as you go over keeping both hip bones nice and still and then twist rotate hinge return back to center rotate the upper body keeping the lower body stable so both knees remain even as you hinge back rotate from your waist muscles push through your legs return with length and then elongate twist with length push through the legs return the challenge is to hinge back and keeping your spine and your torso as straight as possible like you've got to pull through your back sides with hands on knee inhale over you go exhale return inhale lift exhale return so imagine there's a skewer going through your breastplate out through your mid back and you're pivoting around that skewer so imagine the skewer is actually a little bit lower than your breastplate sort of more down to underneath you around where the xiphoid process is and you're pivoting lift your right rib cage up return and then nip the right rib cage in return to neutral if it gets too hard, reach the arm out to help you finish off. It's a really challenging exercise here, but well worth it. Great for your obliques and your side muscles. Switching sides. You're on the greater trochanter, so the hip bone at the side there, you want to prop yourself up on that. The left hip is lifted, as you can see, there's a space underneath there. And then lengthen out to neutral. C curve to the right, C curve to the left. Lifting the rib cage up and then nip the left rib cage down right rib to right hip back to neutral and then open the right rib cage return keep lifting your chest up pressing your foot up strengthening your waist your obliques and the outside of the hip if it gets a little hard reach that arm out parallel to the floor and imagine someone's holding onto your wrist pulling you keep lengthening out Try not to buckle forward, doesn't have to be big, and then return. We're doing abduction series one and two, and then abduction straight. Put the block, put the box, <laughs> put the box down, and then put the foot bar down. We're on one spring here. If you want to go heavier, go for it. If one is too strong, then three quarters is great. Okay, so bend your knees, the spine and the pelvis are in neutral, tuck and tilt just to get that neutral position. Keeping the leg that's on the foot plate very still, you're pushing the carriage leg out from the heel, so weight is back into the heel. Our target area is the standing leg, stabilizing through the leg that's on the foot plate. And then we do the other side, so now we keep the carriage leg very still. Keep the pelvis very motionless, no initiating from rocking the pelvis. You're pressing, initiating from pressing the right heel, the foot plate heel into the foot plate. Getting into glute med and glute min. Make sure you're not tilting the pelvis forward and overarching your lower back. The sit bones are anchoring down towards the heels. Now straighten up, pelvis and spine in neutral with straight legs you're pressing out if you have to rock to push the carriage out the springs too hard okay dig the heels down and apart so that the carriage is pushing out from glute med and glute min keep lifting the front pelvic floor up the legs are straight our target area is the outside of the hips and then bend your knees shift your weight stepping off there and then the other side so you walk around step onto the foot plate first shift your weight onto that leg and then make sure you're in neutral keeping the leg that's on the foot plate very still 
and then using the leg that's on the carriage to push the carriage out, pressing through the heel, shifting the weight back into the heels, keep lifting the belly button back and up, keep lifting your chest up. So where my hands are there, that's where we want the target area. Okay, the pelvis must remain very still. The deep abdominals are drawing you in. Make sure you're not straightening or bending that carriage leg. Keep that knee very aligned and still at that angle. The knees are in line with the middle toes. Breathe out through the mouth, in through the nose. And then abduction straight, the legs are straight, the kneecaps are lifted and think of initiating by pressing the heels apart, pelvic floor lifts, chest lifts. Where my hands are there, that's where I want you to push the heels apart from. Strong out breath will help you connect to your deep abdominals and putting your hands in that Glute me, glute min area will help you activate that area. Bend your knees, shift your weight, step back. Lighten the spring. So either half a spring or three quarters of a spring if you're feeling like you need a bit more support. But if you're feeling strong in your inside thighs, then half a spring. The foot that's on the carriage is halfway out of the carriage, arms are out to a T, then you lift the arms up and then you reach out to a T, draw the legs together for four, three, two, one. Inhale, press out, lift the arms, exhale, press down. Okay, now if I was to poke around your inside now, inside thighs now, they're very firm. Drawing the heels towards one another, squeezing the bed into the stopper is the challenge there. Go for a stretch here. And then I want you to press the legs together. Try and touch the feet, the inside thighs together. Inhale, raise up. And then exhale, press down. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Keep reaching out through your limbs. Shift your weight onto the foot plate and then hop off other side. Stepping up onto the foot plate. And then right foot in the middle of the carriage, your arms are out. Squeeze the legs together and then press the carriage out. Lift the arms up without lifting the collarbones up. And then imagine water pouring up from underneath your armpits. You're pressing down on that force that's coming up from underneath you. So you really activate armpits through to the fingertips down. Expanding out and then press down with the legs and in towards one another. Hip mobility, and then strength, press the bed into the stopper, more, 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 more. Inhale through the nose, pelvic floor, navel to spine, out through the mouth. Inhale, lift and expand. Exhale, press down, lots of strength here underneath your arms, inside thighs, and then shift your weight and hop off there. We're going into tendon stretch prep, so lift the bar up, put a sticky mat, something underneath your pelvis here. If you don't have that, you can use a mat. And then feet are out wide, the legs are not touching here, they're out quite wide. And then you simply straighten the legs and then bend. Breathe out to press out, breathe in to return. Keep the heels slightly lifted in space, so don't let the heels go underneath the bar too much there. Keep looking down towards your pelvis, allow the weight of your head to stretch the lower back and the back of the legs. And then bring the legs together, hands either side, legs and feet and knees are together. Breathe out to straighten and then breathe in to bend. So this time we're in parallel with the legs together. If you can keep your face as close to your knees as possible, fantastic. But your version's fine. If the other one before this is easier, okay, so you can repeat that. Otherwise, if you wanted to draw your legs in, if you've got that range of mobility in your hips, then fantastic. If not, then just repeat the one before. You 
you're pushing through the legs and you're pulling through the arms. 